Well, fine, good afternoon, everyone. This is Patricia, and I am traveling for history. As you can see, I have found us a lovely cemetery. I am in Williston, Vermont today, and uh, I had two people, two, highly recommend this place. So, here I am. This is the Thomas Chittenden, also known as Chittenden, also known as Old Williston Cemetery. So, I am going to be uh, uh, climbing up the embankment here shortly to get up there. And uh, let's see what I can find. I do know of uh, two people who are buried here. They will be separate videos, actually. But uh, this one is the cemetery itself. So let's take a, a look-see. It looks fairly old. Unfortunately, I really don't have any information on the cemetery. It's so frustrating. Um, I found the names on findagrave.com. I mean, I knew the name of the cemetery. Uh, but then I found Old Williston Cemetery listed on findagrave.com. So that's pretty darn good. Always happy to find more information. But uh, other than that, and the two people, two specific people who are buried here, Nope, I don't have any other information for you about the cemetery itself. That's a shame. But uh, let's go take a look-see. And mainly I'm going to start right here because uh, if you watch my video on the East Cemetery, which is actually just up the street a little bit, uh, you saw me film a headstone just like this one. Except the other one has its other tower just like this side does so you just back it or better yet I'll just pre press the <laughs> ultra wide and and uh, take some photos that way if you're interested in seeing those I'm on Instagram traveling for history I have a Facebook page you, you can see them there as well also traveling for history I think you sense this a theme right Yes, I suspect you too. Such an inter interesting design. And this is metal. Hear that? That's metal. It's rusting. You can see it's metal too. All right. And we see this is a woman, Mary Wench, who died March 15, 1844, aged 22 years. Wow, so young. So young. All right, so let me uh, Boy, see itty bitty headstones. Do you see that one right there? And there's uh, another one farther down as well. The last time I was in Wilson, there was snow all over the ground. As you may recall, in this case, there are limbs all over the ground. Yeah, there's quite a few limbs right around here. So, trip hazards galore. Boy, oh, I see a repaired headstone. Let's go look at that. Let's go take a look, see at a repaired headstone. Well, you can see definitely uh, some uh, very large um, cracks right there and uh, plenty of looks like maybe cement used, some concrete used to repair. Um, certainly looks like marble. Alicia Miller, born August 4, I think it's 1892, died August 3, 1971, aged 79 years. Wow, missed their birthday by a day, a day. And this one, as we can see, is 
leaning forward and it's likely because of the, the filler right there but uh, I'll still take a repaired headstone over one that is in need of assistance um, let's see I love the obelisk here I think we know by now that's the Egyptian symbol of eternal life. The last cemetery I was in was the uh, Richmond Village Cemetery, also known as the Old Village Cemetery. <laughs> um, I counted six obelisk uh, headstones. It was a fairly small cemetery. I don't know, maybe half an acre. It wasn't very big. Um, treacherous to walk but uh, six obelisks that were obviously obelisk and a few more that could have been uh, could have been <laughs> so this is the honorable uh, Solon Miller I presume the uh, apostrophe replaces an O who died August 20 1847 aged 86 and his wife Irene who died at the age of 76 in 1839 then Harry Bradley and his wife Maria Miller the honorable I wonder if you were a judge you uh, may or may not be aware that Solon is the uh, is considered the first um, lawgiver so it would be, you know, kind of likely. Uh, anyway. Eighteen thirty four, eighteen sixty six, he served in the eighty eighth regiment, Illinois, Vol volunteered during the Civil War. And indeed, it says G-A-R on it. Grand Army of the Republic. Oh, it's plastic. Oh. The, um, the cities and towns buy these things. And certainly plastic is a lot less expensive than the uh, brass or bronze ones I typically see. But still, it's plastic. They serve their country. Do they not deserve better than plastic? And maybe that's just me, but it's a tough call. Another uh, likely Solon. Uh, S. Miller died uh, 18. 80, age 38, his wife Sarah Bottom died March 25, 18, what is that, 14, age 22, Elmira E. Chittenden died August 21, 1817, age 23, Eliza C. Mitchell died November 21, 1827, age 30, all wives of S.S. Miller. So young, all of them, uh, all, all, all his wives and him too, 38, 38 is young folks, it's young. I see another obelisk, do you? All right, I certainly see some uh, children's graves, looks like children's graves anyway. Nice tall one, Elmira, wife of, what is that, Dr. Matthew Cole, and daughter of Reuben and Hannah. Uh, King, formerly of New Lebanon, New York, died July 4, 1843. What does it say down here? Hmm. Never age. 
I don't know what else it says. And then some more Millers. But you just never know who you're going to meet in the cemetery. I was ch chatting with a woman for quite a few minutes. Uh, she came over to uh, see if I had lost a drone. I don't own a drone. Those things are expensive. I can't afford a drone. Though I do think they would be useful to have. I think you do too. And you may agree with that. Um, hard to say. But, uh, ooh, Clotilda. Now there's a name you do not hear at all anymore. Daughter of John and Betsy Brown. Died July 5, 1842, aged 13 years. Oh, I'm sorry. Another daughter, Jane, died aged 22 years, again in 1842. 1847, aged 21 years, another daughter, same family. Betsy, wife of John Brown, died October 4, 1857, aged 64 years. I have to say, thus far, these marble headstones are in the most readable condition I have ever seen uh, thus far in a cemetery. Oh, I see some potential for these to fall backwards. I mean, this one, this is when it's a downside when something is um, heavier because we can see... It has come up a little bit from its base, not a ton, but uh, still, it's a lot, isn't it? All right, another one that's been repaired. Paul Clark died February 3, 1856, in the 25th year of his age. Look at this though. The writing is leaning left and the writing is leaning right. That's that's really unusual. As opposed to being straight up and down. Huh. I wonder why. Makes me wonder a bit if Mr. Clark were ambidextrous, meaning that he could write with either his left or right hand. In the same, same, in a similar manner. Huh. Marvin W., son of Wright and Priscilla Clark. What does it say down here? Air. <laughs> she could blight. Oh my gosh, I cannot. Let me uh, get up close for this, and come on down here for this. Unless I kneel, I'll not be able to get a, a straight on shot of that for you. And uh, I apologize for that. If I kneel, I might not be able to get up because my knees just are not the best knees anymore. <laughs> 11 years of dancing will do that. Our mother, our father. He was 80 when he died. And she was 74. And she died four years after he did. Huh. Interesting. I recommend if you are interested in reading any of these headstones that you uh, pause the video to uh, indulge. Now, the woman I was talking to said that this is the oldest cemetery in Williston, the East Cemetery, which I did visit um, last week. I think it was last week. Um, um, th that you can still be buried there. I actually don't know if you can still be buried here. You'd have to contact the, the town of Williston to uh, see if that would be the case. <coughs> 
Well, this is then up against a ravine. <laughs> Let's see, what does this one say? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us our victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is Otis Whitney, who died November 14, 1857, aged 76 years. For those who think that folks in this time period tended to die young, or didn't live that long, I guess, perhaps, typically if you could survive childhood with the myriad diseases, diphtheria, smallpox, those two come to mind off the top of my head, you're usually pretty good to go uh, until you're older. This person was so 78 years when uh, he died. Pretty amazing. Looks like we have a headstone down. Lucian, son of Otis and Sarah Whitney, died May 8, 1923, aged 10 months. Oh. I feel so, so bad for those parents. Let me just come down here and... Well, this cemetery is not too big, is it now? No, not really. Oh, here we go. Now, this is what I'm used to seeing, is uh, headstones that are looking like this. That one is whew, mostly readable, and uh, this one is all readable. But still, I wonder why they're down here. Oh, and there's a, an itty-bitty one. The woman who I was talking to lives across the street from here, and uh, she was saying the oldest burial in Williston is here. Huh. No idea. This definitely looks like, looks like a child's headstone. And these over here look pretty old. Look at that tree. Isn't that amazing? Of course, it's hard to see. I have glare on my, on my lens, on my uh, viewfinder, rather. But look at that. Wow. Uh, it looks like it was, it broke away from the other side of it. I don't want to go down there. I don't know what the ground is like. Tons of, oof, tons of leaves. The ground is uneven, but so far it's been quite walkable. Just have to be careful uh, how, where you're walking. This area down here is not as nice as up there. I don't see any rain on this side. What about the other side? The place I was just standing on this side um, gave under me. So. I don't see any rain on this side either. Hmm. I don't know. Ready on this side. This reminds me of a, a headstone, of headstones I saw at the Rockingham Meeting House Cemetery. I'll put a link uh, in the video so you can watch it. But you'll see that they had a lot of slate headstones and a lot of these uh, designs at the top. And let's see if I can show you 
You almost get a sense of this design. In memory of Mr. Richard Cladino, Cladding, Cladding, excuse me, who died December 7th, 1812, age 37 years, 13 weeks, and one day. Behold. Almost bet something about what this is gonna say. Hmm. I'm trying to figure out that first sentence. Now let's see. Behold, something, something you pass by as you are now, so once was I. As I am now, so you must be. Prepare for death and follow me. I remember mom talking about seeing an epitaph like that and uh, thinking, wow, that's, uh, she told me that was when I was a kid. And I uh, thought, wow, that's, uh, it's true, but, uh, how many of us want to think about our, our, our mortality like that? Probably not too many of us. And there are two more uh, down here, so I may as well go and uh, capture these guys as well. As long as I'm down in this area. We had uh, 51 degrees Fahrenheit and rain which removed all the snow. I don't ski. I didn't do anything with snow except to kind of wish we were gone. So, so it's nice for recording cemetery videos. Uh, I don't see any writing on this side. But, I always hope that uh, there are no ticks, to be honest. Let's see anything on this side, how about... I to say, I don't see anything here. Yeah, I don't, I don't see anything on this side. And I don't see anything on the other side either. A lot of the uh, serrated markings though, like a steak knife, serrated edge. Mr. James Lafferty died February 13, 1810, aged 55 years. Mrs. Kesia Lafferty died July 15 or 25, 1827, aged 67 years. So, not bad. Sarah L, daughter of someone and Sarah. Hmm. Last month died 
1837. Hmm, interesting. on this side. Let's walk around. See what's around the bend here. Okay, here we go. Um, Josephine as daughter of yeah, I don't know. Died March 2, 1845. No idea what this is, to be perfectly honest. This is a memorial garden here, and uh, and uh, Thomas Chittenden, first governor of Vermont. I'll be offering a separate video on uh, him and his life. Stay tuned. Actually. It'll probably be up before this one is. So let's just continue walking the cemetery. William Elliot, only son of uh, Isa and Edie Ingalls, died January 19, 1833, aged six years and 11 months. <sighs> I'm really sorry. I'm always sorry when I read of children who've died and the parents certainly who had to bury their children. And this is a, a lovely urn right here with uh, looks like drapes around it. <clears throat> I keep sniffling. I don't have a cold. But the temperature now is I think 46 degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, the wind chill makes it feel like 40, uh, also Fahrenheit. 32 degrees Fahrenheit is equal to zero degrees Celsius. So you can get an idea of the temperature. So although I would say it's not actually cold out, the wind makes it feel uh, certainly a lot cooler than it is. There's a southerly wind southwest wind so isn't that pretty with the flowers on there yeah the, uh, so you can see that better so pretty and this one has a candle I have not seen a candle before I guess it's showing us that it has burned out. All right, well, this is the end of part one of the Thomas Chittenden or Chittenden or Old Williston Cemetery. So I'll be continuing in part two and uh, look forward to see you there. This is Patricia. I am traveling for history. Until I see you again, you have a great day. Thanks for watching.